Hey guys, welcome back. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Ashley. I'm a YouTuber based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And please, if you've not subscribed to my channel yet, just take a minute. It won't even take up to a minute. Just click on the subscribe button, okay? So guys, today, I've not done this in a while, you know, have a sit down and talk about my daughter. For those of you seeing my face for the first time, I have a toddler named Nora. And in today's video, I want to talk about how I deal with tantrums from her temper tantrums i'm sure we're all familiar with the parents even people that know your mothers or parents yet um so i want to talk about how i deal with it so if it sounds like something you would want to listen to or watch please so guys um as usual people that are used to me i always have my notes with me so that i don't come here and talk off point or you know blab and at the end i'll find out that i didn't even say really important things so i have my notes here with me and just for reference sake my child is now 20 months old yeah she's not 20 months today so she's a full-blown toddler and she she does it all like all oh, she has the energy for it so she does not hold back so um just for explanation tantrums are like uncontrolled show of emotions anger frustration you know that emotional outburst that kids have some people call it meltdown sometimes i call it meltdown where they just some throw themselves on the ground some hit their head somewhere some start trying to scatter things you know they just every child shows tantrum so throws tantrums in different ways but generally tantrum is just an outburst of emotions of anger and, and frustration and things like that and unfortunately adults also have tantrums like i'm saying it's unfortunate because if you check the dictionary, you'll say in young children, but you and I know talk adults that talk through tantrums, but this is not what this video is about. So that's basically what tantrum is. And I always knew what tantrum is. I knew that my child would throw tantrums at some point. But the first time it happened, I think she was about 14 months or so. The first time she really threw a tantrum, I didn't see it coming. And I I did not know what to do if I'm being honest. Like for a minute I was like, is this what it's going to be? Because according to research, I've seen that children tantrums are normal with kids till like they're about five or so. And I don't know, a part of me just felt maybe because I always hear the term terrible to terrible to a part of me just felt like okay, maybe when she's two she will start it. But no, she threw her first tantrum when she was about 13 to 14 months and I did not expect it. But it now made me, you know, sit up. I had to start researching about it to, you know, educate myself better so that I'll not have like an excessive, um, dramatic child on my hands because God knows I cannot handle it. And the great thing about being a mom or being a parent in 2020 is that there's so much information out there, there's so much research out there on YouTube, on Google, like anywhere you just find something, even on Instagram, you see pages that are dedicated to something. Like there's a page, um, I can't remember, maybe when I'm editing this video, I'll add the handle here, that is dedicated to tantrums, like they always talk about how to handle tantrums and all that. So I've learned a lot of things in the last couple of months and they don't always work for me. But most of the time, maybe I can say 70% of the time, which sounds like a win-win situation for me, 70% of the time they work and, you know, I just thought I'll sh share with you guys. I mean, my mantra is learning and sharing, so why not share this? Guys, the first thing I had to learn how to do is to prevent the tantrum from actually happening. Like, I had to, you know, take my time and study her and, you know, try and figure out what is the tantrum and try and stop it before it actually happens. It doesn't always work like with kids i don't think anything is definite but at least there are days that i'm lucky and i'm able to prevent a tantrum from happening so i'm going to start by telling you guys how i prevent her from having her outburst and the first thing i try to do is make sure that all her basic needs are met by basic needs i mean she's not hungry she's not thirsty she's not you know she doesn't feel sweaty messy the place is not hot she's not cranky because she has not napped like when all these things are out of the way chances of her being cranky are lesser or throwing tantrums are lesser because she can't properly communicate well yes when she's hungry she tends to drag me to the kitchen but sometimes 
she's she wants more than what i'm giving her like even though it's when it's time for a meal she's really hungry she doesn't want a snack she wants a meal and situations like that make her cranky like when you know her tongue is not filled and things like that or when she's thirsty sometimes she has drank a lot of water i just assume that okay she does not need water again and i just keep her bottle where her hand cannot reach or she herself cannot find it she starts getting cranky i notice if she wants to sleep and you know she cannot sleep she's feeling sleepy but there's no opportunity for her to nap everything in the taste hash that starts to throw tantrums and all that so i prevent tantrums by making sure that all her basic needs are met like the most important things for her to make her feel comfortable and met sometimes i even bake her give her a night bath earlier than when i'm supposed to when i notice it's maybe okay it's a hot day she's beginning to get irritated and all that she wants to change out of what she's wearing and feel fresh then i go and bathe and sometimes after bathing her she stops being cranky she stops throwing tantrums and things like that so yeah the first thing i try to do is make sure that she's not cranky because of some you know lack of basic needs and things like that and the second thing i do is to avoid boredom yes kids get bored like really bored sometimes she i notice that okay she's at the verge of losing it and even though i try to entertain her with everything i can it's not working so at the end maybe it's us taking a walk that will fix all of that or even if she has her toy she has everything with her but i'm busy on my phone or i'm busy with something else and i notice okay not none of her stops are entertaining her it means she's bored and she wants more and if it's a situation where we can't go out i just drop everything i'm doing and sit with her and play with her you know just have fun with her and things like that so i know that boredom makes her cranky sometimes yeah it really does i don't know if it's the same with other kids but i think it's the same like they get tired of their toys i mean i'm sure even as adults we cannot play with the same thing over and over and over again so i think it's expected of them to you know get tired of their toys so i notice that sometimes boredom makes her cranky so i try to avoid boredom another thing another preventive measure i take is I try to communicate clearly with her for example if um she's used to okay after she's done with breakfast it's time to shower but for some reason i cannot bathe her immediately i have to do something else i have to communicate i try to communicate properly with her because she just needs to start pulling me to the bathroom or pulling me to the kitchen which at the kitchen for her means that she borrow her bathing water and things like that so i try to communicate clearly with her yes she might not understand every word that i say but I think when I explain myself to her, it gives her this sense of understanding. Like, okay, I'm not almost like I'm not taking her for granted. I'm giving her a reason why so so and so thing cannot happen right now. Let's say, for example, now we want to go out and I dress her up, but I'm not done dressing up. She starts dragging me to the door and it gets her really cranky. If, okay, I'm wearing my shirt, I'm wearing everything. Let's go. Why are we not yet out? Like, she doesn't say that, but you know that's what she's finished. She starts getting irritated. Then I just, you know, bend to her level, her height level, and explain to her, okay, we still need to get ready. I'm not done getting ready. Your dad is not done getting ready. Sometimes he does the explaining, like, we're still trying to get ready. It's not your time for us to go out. Just give us a few minutes. And sometimes she just relaxes. Yes, she does not reply, okay, I'm head or okay, I understand. But she kind of understands what we're trying to explain and she just chills and goes back to playing and when it's time for us to go we head out so yeah i try to communicate everything to her clearly especially if something is changing in her routine or something is changing in her usual um schedule i try to explain to her so it will not just you know come too sudden to her then the last thing i do to reduce tantrums with the girl is i try to give her some sort of control like we basically tell them or make sure they do everything whenever we want i tell her when it's time to bath tell her when it's time to eat tell her what clothes to wear and things like that but i try to give her some control for example i don't come and tell her what toy to play with. i don't tell her what to watch on her tablet like i just give her the tablet whatever she chooses to watch when she was much younger yes i always select what i want her to watch but now at this age when she now has a mind of her own you know i allow her to decide whatever it is that she wants to watch to avoid issues so those are the things that you just sometimes just i don't force her to eat if she does not want to eat because she just need to a meltdown i don't you know i know yes she's a child and i still need to you know lead her through some things but as much as i can i try to give her control i don't want to like take over her entire life and make her feel you know completely out of control because they want to feel like they're in charge yes toddlers want to feel like they're in charge so i try to allow her feel that way sometimes if 
maybe on a particular day what i would rather we play with is matching colors and things like that but she's not interested she wants something else i just allow her have that like it's all play she's all she's learning through all of it no matter which one it is so i don't always try to control everything about her i don't force her on a particular snack to eat if for example she wants to eat biscuits and i would rather her eat apple I don't force her, I'll allow her have her biscuits. She will still come back and eat the apple when she feels like. So yes, I try to give her some control. So these are the things that I do to prevent tantrums. However, however, they don't always work. So I'm going to tell you guys when the tantrums eventually happen, what I do about it, how I handle it, how I deal with the tantrums. So guys, when the tantrums eventually happen, how um, the first thing I try to do is to acknowledge her feelings. The truth is tantrums are not bad like it's completely normal with children they cannot properly express how they feel and that's why adults are, are not expected to throw tantrums because you are an adult you feel to express how you feel but children they can't entirely express how they are feeling so the only way they can do it is you know action like show of emotions like you know so tantrums are not bad and no child is bad so even a child that cons consistently throw, throw tantrums it's not a bad child it's just a bad behavior always throwing tantrums but it's not a bad child right so i acknowledge her feelings i tell her i understand you're frustrated i understand you're angry i understand you're sad i understand this is what you'd rather do but you know in a situation where we have to be a particular thing let's say for example she wants to watch tv for his back time we have to be like we've already mixed your water there's no postponing there's no nothing around that so she you know she starts getting angry when i try to carry her to the bathroom and all that i just tell her i understand you're frustrated i understand you're angry i understand you're sad i understand this is what you know this is something else or there's something else you rather do but it's okay you have to get this done now we have to do this right now if it's not like a bathing situation and maybe i'm not giving her what she'd rather eat or i collect something dangerous she's playing with i just squat in front of her to her level i read somewhere that that is really important to have eye contact with them when you're talking i just spot to her level and explain myself to her I just tell her i'm sorry you can't have this right now this toy is not safe for you or this is not what we need to be doing right now i just try to i acknowledge her frustration I don't... another thing that i do and her father does this a lot he uses this method a lot is to redirect it's more like distracting her from whatever is irritating her let's say for example she um, she wants to climb the dining table and you know it's not safe for her nobody is around to watch her and she starts when you carry her away from that place she starts to have a meltdown we try to distract her give her something else that she finds interesting allow her to do something else that she finds interesting her father has the energy he will carry her and start running around the house and that thing excites the hell out of her so before you know it she has forgotten what she wanted to do and she's laughing she's enjoying herself she's giggling and things like that my own case i just look for something else that she loves to do i can just pick up a toy maybe i pick up her drum set and i start to beat it and she'll start dancing and she'll forget that there was something else she wanted to do so yes we try to distract her from whatever it is that you know we don't want her to do that might make her throw a tantrum like let's say sometimes it's, it would have gone so bad that she's already at the bed she's already hitting her head somewhere yes my child's tantrum she demonstrates her tantrum by hitting her head on things it could be on you it could be on the wall anywhere sometimes it would have gone that bad but the moment you just give her something fun distract her with something interesting she forgets it, like almost immediately you, with the tears in her eyes she's very plain she's laughing she has forgotten about it so that's something that works for me i don't know if it's going to work for you guys but redirection works a lot or distraction works a lot for us we just you know redirect her attention to something else sometimes it could be on tv i'll just i'll just really change the channel to something i know will excite her and you know call her attention to it and next minute she's tired away she's she has forgotten what it is that you know she was getting angry about and things like that so that's those are like the two things that we do bad behaviors i saw that in somewhere a long time ago and it stuck with me like there are no bad children they're just children with bad behaviors so i think if you have that in mind you we'll stop um, being too hard on them like what you're trying to fix is that bad behavior not the child there's nothing wrong with the child it's just bad behavior a bad habits that the child has so i think that's something i should share with you guys that there are no bad children just bad behaviors number one and the second thing is to always give positive attention and ignore minor misbehaviors i would explain this thing like this um children want attention like 
especially toddlers they love attention especially from their mom or whichever parent is always around they crave attention they live for attention so i try to give attention to only positive things and ignore minor bad behaviors minor not something major not something intense for example now if she if she finished you know messing with a cupboard and she closes it back that's a good behavior so i tell her oh good job thank you for closing it back or you know or she something drops she um something she's playing with drops and she picks it up oh thank you i give attention to positive behavior in this way because she loves my loves me paying attention to her she would always try to do things that she knows okay to get mommy to look at me to get mommy to talk to me to get mommy to pay attention to me so she tries to do it. like even if she opens a drawer and she's doing she's scattering the place and i call her come let's go she'll pick up everything put it back in the drawer and close it back because she knows that that will make me give her credit or that will make me you know, clap for her or give her some kind of attention however when she does minor misbehavior i ignore it for example she can take her a basket of maybe her figurines animal figurines she might just take a cool basket and pew, pour everything on the ground i know that like there's no point it's not something dangerous she didn't do something dangerous yes it's something naughty but it's not something dangerous so there's no point in giving attention to it because like i said children want attention both positive and neg negative as long as you're giving them attention they are going to keep doing that thing that they are doing so that they continue to get that attention so if she does something like you know pouring out her toys and trying to create a mess i just ignore her and sometimes when she sees that that is not working that's not getting me any attention she stops it like there's so many things that she needs to do and um, we have this rechargeable standing fan that she would always try and go and be shaking and initially we we'll always talk no, I didn't, no, I, and she'll just laugh once you start calling her leave that play that she'll laugh to her you're playing with her and things like that but over time i said to ignore her once she goes to the fan i just act like that not seeing her yes i'm watching her but I just act like i'm not interested in what she's doing and now the fan can be in front of this girl for hours and she doesn't care because she knows that it's not getting my attention like she needs to do something else to get my attention and things like that so yeah like just focus more on positive attention and try and ignore minor things and yeah if it's something dangerous of course you pay them the attention that they need so that they don't hurt themselves but if it's something minor that you can ignore i'll suggest you just ignore it so that you know they will not get the reward that they're expecting and over time you just stop doing that and knowing that it's not getting them anything and the third and most important thing i'd like to point out is that if you or your partner always lose your cool at each other in front of your child your child will pick up from that let's say for example you're the kind of person that when you get angry you yell you're always shouting that is how your child will learn how to express emotion that's how your child will learn how to express anger even when I need to scold her, I try not to raise my voice because at first, when she said three tantrums, I, I was yelling. I thought that would fix anything. But maybe girls start yelling back at me. Like, she, 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 you raise your voice, I raise my voice back at you. Like, it's a back to back situation. So, yes, like, kids learn from what they see. I've said this a lot of times on my social media pages. Kids learn. Like, I've experienced it firsthand. Of something that I do even out of reflex and the next minute the next day she is doing it so they learn by what they see so if you always lose your cool in front of them maybe your you are your partner quarreling and you're the type that will throw something hit the person she will pick it up and let me give you guys an example I do not hit my child like I'm so huge on not hitting my child especially at this young age I mean she's not up to two yet but a few days ago sometime this week she I was really sleepy i was tired i just wanted to go to bed but she was not ready to sleep so but she was trying to get my attention and i was dozing off she just went to um a stool and poured out everything that was on the stool so is that sound that woke me up of her pouring everything for us her remote my phone her bottle water everything she just pushed you know trying to she was frustrated now pushed everything on the ground and out of reflex as i woke up i just you know spanned her that why would you do that the girl turned around and hit me too. Guys, this is the first time I am hitting this girl. And yet, her instinct was to hit me back. So children do what they see. Like, whatever it is that you're doing in front of them, they'll pick up from it and they'll do that. So another thing that, okay, your child is always so, so dramatic, he's always, he's always, and how do you also handle anger in front of your child? 
a child that is always seeing the father beats the mom will think that okay when you're angry at someone that is how you express it you hit the person so another thing that we need to watch is how we react to our own how we handle our own emotions about it so sometimes even when she's throwing tantrums and and you know i'm trying to sometimes i have to repeat myself like 20 times it's okay i'm sorry i'm frustrated i'm so sorry you can't have this right now i have to repeat myself over and over and over Oh my god, tantrums will test your patience as a parent. I try to put myself over and over and over again. After a while, she starts to talk to me. Like, I don't understand what she's saying. But, you know, she starts to blah, 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 and, you know, say all those things. And before you know it, we're back on the same page. So, guys, these are the things that I do, or these are the ways that I handle or deal with her tantrums. And, like, I started in the video, I try to prevent it. But if I cannot, these are the things that I do. To handle it i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this video was important to someone i hope you learned something please share with anyone you can share this video with like comment and please guys do not forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching